Hi, thanks for stopping by. Today on Keep It Simple with Grandma, we'll be smoking some pork butts. I have four seven and a half to eight and a half pound uh, pork butts, and um, we have a big gathering this weekend, so we're gonna need a lot of meat, and it's going to be a long, slow process, but that is the best way to get the most tender and juicy um, pulled pork. So follow along with these simple steps and um, we'll get started here. Okay, the first thing I did was to preheat this smoker. I have it set at 225 and that's the temperature that it will be between 225 and 250 for the whole smoke time. So the first thing I do is to take just some regular yellow mustard and I slather, um, is that a word? Slather. Um, go ahead and slather all sides of the pulled pork and then I will generously sprinkle with a rub. Um, this is a rub that I like to use. It doesn't have quite as much sodium in it. Uh, but you can use whatever rub you like or make your own homemade rub. I'm going to just use gloves because it will make this mustard part a lot easier. It may seem strange to put mustard on, but mustard um, is actually not going to be a flavor that you're going to taste when you um, eat your pulled pork, but it's there to help the, um, the rub stick. You could probably use like olive oil or something like that, but we actually really like uh, the effect of the mustard. It helps to make a really nice bark on the outside. By the way, I patted these dry before I started the mustard. Okay, it's better to season from up high. That way you get better coverage and generously season. Okay, now I will let them set for about 20 to 30 minutes before I put them on the smoker. Okay, it was awfully windy out there, so I thought I would just talk to you in here. But I put the um, butts on the smoker with the fat side up. And that just helps when that um, fat starts breaking down and melting. It just melts right into the meat and just helps it to be more tender and more juicy. Um, every hour, I will spritz it with um, apple cider vinegar. You can use water if you'd rather. But the whole idea be behind that is just to keep the outside from drying out. So. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's helpful. And uh, so I'll do that about every hour, just um, spritz um, each one and all sides of each one. And I will let it go till it's about 165. Um, I put the internal probes in and I can monitor it on my phone. But if you don't have one of those like that, you can just use um, one of the um, ones that you just poke in and then when it's 165 I usually take it off that's considered the stall time and that means that the meat just doesn't really seem to be doing anything for a long period of time so what I do at that point and I'll show you but um, is I wrap it in foil and then I add a liquid in with the foil and then that helps um, to speed it up past that stall time and helps um, cook the meat a little faster but also adds some liquid in there it kind of steams the last part so that it's a lot more moist and tender so we'll do that when it's time so I'll see you back when it's 165 
okay one of the pork butts is uh, 165 and ready to come out as you can see the top where the the fat has split that's also another indicator that you're at about 165 so I'm gonna go ahead and make a little boat here and then dump in about um, one half cup to one cup of apple juice. You can use broth. I will go ahead and put the probe back in and um, keep monitoring it. And when it is 201 to 204, I will take it off and it will be completely done. So the others are going to be done in a few minutes here, but I thought I'll just do them as they are at 165 here. So this one goes back out and we'll wait for the others. Okay, this one is done. The others are still on the smoker, but um, it has come up to temp 203. So I'm going to let it rest for at least an hour before trying to pull it. So I'm just going to um, set it aside here. I also wanted to let you know that you can inject um, the pork butts before you smoke them uh, with uh, chicken broth, beef broth, or uh, juice, um, anything like that uh, with seasoning just to give them a little more flavor. But um, when I pull the uh, meat, I add butter and salt and pepper or any other seasoning that I want to add at that time. So I feel like that's enough um, seasoning so it's not necessar necessary to inject, but I have already done that. Um, and let's see, you actually don't have to wrap um, part way through. You can just leave it on uh, 225 to 250 for the whole time without taking them off, just continuing to spritz about every hour. It just takes a lot longer to do that. Um, this was on for about five hours, four or five hours, and then I wrapped it when it was 165, and then it took another, let's see, uh, three hours um, to get up to temperature. Um, and the, the target temperature of 201 to 204 is a temperature where the connective tissues are loosening and which causes the meat to be more tender and soft. So that's why it's important to get it up to that temperature. If you have to slice the meat, it's not quite um, tender. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not bad, it's just not quite as tender. So once we let it rest, we'll pull it. Um, if it's too cool when we're ready to pull it, um, you can just warm it back up and by warming it up I usually put it in a, a large um, roaster pan with a little bit of liquid on the bottom. Um, sometimes the juice that's left over I can feel there's still some juice on the bottom here. Um, just put that juice in the bottom and then put the meat in um, that roaster, cover it with foil, and then put it in the oven for about 300 or at about 300 degrees just until it's heated through. And as soon as it's warm enough, then you can go ahead and pull it. It will pull so much easier when it's um, warm like that. Okay, this big old boy is ready to wrap now. He took a lot longer. He took about an hour and a half, two hours longer. But I noticed when I first put the probe in, that it was still about 33 degrees. So it was just barely thawed. <laughs> so that would have been more helpful if that would have been thawed a little longer. Okay, all the pork butts are finished smoking and they have rested. I actually kept them all night in a cooler that was lined with foil and still warm. Um, I will go ahead and demonstrate how to pull one of them and then friends are coming over later and they'll help with the rest. But um, to each 
pork butt, I add about the equivalent of one stick of butter that's um, melted or fairly melted. Um, because this isn't quite as hot as I normally have it, I went ahead and melted the butter. Uh, salt and pepper for seasoning. You can add um, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever uh, flavorings you like. We're happy with just salt and pepper. And uh, then you can store it in the refrigerator for um, several days. You can also um, put it in an um, airtight container and store it in the refrigerator uh, for two to three months. And then to reheat, just put it in a container, a roaster, um, or a container with a lid or foil for the top. But make sure that you have um, liquid on the bottom so that it doesn't dry out. And that liquid could be water that's been seasoned, or it can be broth, chicken, or beef. And uh, just heat it until it's um, cooked through. Or not cooked, but warm through. Uh, so I usually just keep it in the natural juices here um, until it's ready to serve. And so those are the juices that I usually use to heat it up if I need to. So we'll go ahead and get started with pulling this one. Okay, to pull the meat, you can use something like this. These are claws, um, and that works fine. You can also use just two forks, just pull it apart. But I find it's easier to just use my hands. See how easily it just falls apart there. If you have huge um, hunks of fat, you can take that out. But any small amounts of fat I just leave in, it actually adds a lot of flavor. But if it grosses you out, just take it out. It's still pretty warm in the middle. You can use heat proof gloves if you want to work with it when it's a little hotter. But I usually just wait until it's a little cooler. Look how nice that's falling apart here. Just work it until it's the texture that you like it to be. Now I will add the butter and salt and pepper. I always have to wash off my <laughs> containers here when I'm done. My hands get so messy. Okay, all the meat has been pulled, and now a little helping on some barbecue sauce, some sweet baby rays, the sweet and spicy. Top it with some bread and butter pickles. Perfect combination. And there you go. A delicious pulled pork sandwich. Ooh, what an awful sound. I always have to wash off my <laughs> containers here when I'm done. My hands get so messy. Um, whatever, but uh, butt crack. 